Typical Florida. Rain, cloudy, then sun. You never know what you're going to get. Rain most of the afternoon. That's cleared up. We're underway with FAU getting the first possession. UCF won the toss. They elected to defer. Nikosi Perry. Danny, you talked about his experience, his second year here at FAU after four at Miami. Yeah, the more comfortable he's in the system, you're seeing it come across with his play on the field. Already this season, nine touchdowns, just two interceptions, really clean with the football. And he's got a really nice grasp for what Willie Taggart wants to do. There is a player down on the special teams play on the side of UCF. Personal foul. Illegal blindside block, return team, number 17. Penalty be half the distance to the goal, will be first down. So a penalty right out of the gate, which is a story for both these teams, high penalty numbers coming in. Right in the middle of your screen there, you saw the FAU defender catch him from that blind side, really in an effort to protect the players. You know the rules are trying to be legislated so that you take those type of hits out of the game when a player can't see you coming at his peripheral. That's what the penalty was for. The hit on Wyatt Sullivan. who was the one who delivered the hit for FAU. And you see Jordan Davis. For the Knights. Being assisted to the sideline. For this game, a lot of excitement, Danny. You mentioned you're a Florida local. There's just an yeah. element of buzz going into this game. You have these teams separated by about less than three hours from each other at UCF. They travel well. They have their fair share of fans here in attendance for FAU. Highest amount of student tickets handed out for this game. So this could be one of those where it's fun. The crowd gets into it no matter who makes the big play. Look at that. that the FAU student section is jamming right now. And they didn't let a little, a little lightning, little rain slow them down one bit. They are ruckus and ready to have impact on this game. Perry to lead the way for the two and one FAU Owls. On first down. Hand off to Larry McCannon with a plenty of room across the number, past the 40, out near midfield. So Larry McCammon, the junior out of Birmingham, Alabama, a loud statement to start. He's averaged over 100 yards per game, and you saw that massive hole that was created by an offensive line. And FAU likes to go up tempo. They want to hustle up to the line of scrimmage and get going. 34 yards on the first carry. There's that quick tempo. Perry to work. Fires over the middle. There's Shamal Entring, who did not play last week with an injury. He is back one of the FAU starting receivers. Oh, man, I, you got to love this start for the FAU offense. You run off a gash uh, on the run and then off a play action pass. Nice quick slant. Perfect throw from Perry there. Took only two plays to get into plus territory. From the 34. There's another slam pattern. Jamal Edrick can't hang on to that one. And it's incomplete. That one was a little bit off, but here's the clean one. You see the play action pass, that backer gets a little bit lost. And just a beautiful throw. Right in front of Corey Thornton. The starters on the FAU side, Jamal Edrin, we already heard from him. He's back receiving core, banged up last week, and their win against FCS Southeast Louisiana. Big win, 42-9. Receiving core getting a bit healthier for this one against UCF. Second and 10. Perry on the option. McCammon, run on the outside, down the sideline, has the first down. Scoots out of bounds by the 20. Beautiful job, just running a little option down the line. You're forcing UCF to make a move. As soon as Perry saw the defender bite on him, pitched it out to his back for a nice game. Quick tempo continues. McCammon once more, and he gets to the 15. And on the tackle, Jason Johnson. So watch Perry pushes the end of man on line on scrimmage number 15 you see him as soon as he realizes oh he's taking me pitches it out to McCammon and then he gets to the perimeter and takes it for the extra yardage though. So McCammon filling that void with Johnny Ford 
Missing the first few weeks of this season for FAU. Question who would get the carries? McCammon has stepped into that role. Same with Zuberi Mobley. Who had a big game last week. He gets the carry here. And Mobley up the middle. He scoots through and scores. What a try for FAU to get this one started. Wow, I tell you what, look at the offensive line. Great job up through the middle. Mobley finds a crease, and then no safety help on the back end. Safety over pursued to the front side. And Mobley takes it in. Boy, I tell you, that's about as good a drive as you would want. Willie Tiger watching this offense firing all cylinders. Couple of big passes, plenty of room to run. Morgan Suarez in to kick the extra points. That one is perfect, just like that FAU drive. We told you this crowd was hyped. They got to love what they see from this FAU Owl offense. Mobley takes it in. Now it's UCF's turn to see if they can respond. But the Owls are up early. Now this one gets started in paradise. Boca return. Ryan O'Keefe, one of the main returners for UCF. Although here is Richardson. And Richardson's run out of bounds. Shy of the 20. All right, here's the left tackle. This is the drive that really set the tone. This play right here. Watch him pull around and seal on a little tackle pull. Number 27, Walter Yates, the linebacker, is coming up to make that play. And look at this block. Just kicks him out beautifully, which opens it up for McCammon for the big play. Gets him to the second level. His speed starts to take over there. That set the tone for the whole drive. Everything in FAU's offense is based on running the football. They want to be physical, and that's what set up the entirety of the drive right there. Physicality, a theme for FAU on the first drive. How does John Rice Plumley respond? Not just from that drive, but from a rough last week. His first pass to Jay Bond Baker makes a man miss and is pushed out of bounds after a gain of close to seven. So John Rice Plumley on the board. The rest of the UCF Knights offensive line with the leader Samuel Jackson at guard and the weapons led by Javon Baker. Javon Baker's a stud on the outside. A transfer comes in. Isaiah Bowser not much there as FAU's defense all over that. No doubt. And you see both of these teams like to go fast. The critical thing is to get that first first down. You don't want three and outs when you're going up tempo. Third down and two. Here's Rice Plumley, who is a mobile threat. Keeps it on the option and picks up the first down. Smoke Mungin, the one to knock him out of bounds. You know, I mentioned John Rice Plumley being the perfect skill set for Gus Malzahn's system that he runs with Chip Lindsay, the offensive coordinator. He's fast, he's mobile, he can really pressure with his legs, and his arm is he's got a cannon for an arm. He's just got to get a little bit more accurate. I love the first throw of the game given an easy completion. There's another throw again to the sideline and again Javon Baker. Well, Smoke Munch and again in coverage and a solid pickup on first down. Now you mentioned uh, what a story John Rice Plumley is. You're talking about a guy who played quarterback in 2019 and Ole Miss, then went to receiver for a couple of years. This is his first season playing quarterback since 2019. And that was something the UCF coaches told us. He's still a little rusty. He's getting back in the field of being behind center. Johnny Richardson, coaches emphasize wanting to get him in more involved this week. Only 10 carries coming into this game for a player who's averaging over 10 yards per carry on the ground, that time on a swing pass. There's definitely a trend with UCF's offense. It's Bowser when they want to run the power game, and it's Richardson a little bit more finesse and speed on the outside, which you saw with that swing pass. This is a pedal to the metal game. Yeah. The screen not there, so Rice Plumley. Do it yourself, kids, and picks up one. <laughs> you know how jealous I am of that play. Like that's that's just pure athleticism. Because if I was playing for a statue like I was, or a pocket passer, like this ball is dead. So most quarterbacks would have to throw it away or possibly get sacked. He's able to get all the way, outrun the defense, get a yard, kind of make sure there's not a negative play there. That's what he brings to the table. Good job by FAU reading that out. They snuff that out, snip that out right from the get go. Willie Taggart looking on on the FAU sideline. Second and nine for UCF. Richardson sweeping across the formation. He is belted and knocked down. 
Armani Eli Adams. Oh, what a nice open field tackle by Armani Eli Adams, as you mentioned there. There's a look at Chip Lindsay, the offensive coordinator for UCF. He and Gus have a really good relationship. Not much of a look at him because UCF works quickly in a deep ball to Ryan O'Keefe. And a pass interference, Armani Eli Adams in coverage. I mean, how about, we're, we're up here yapping. It's not that hard. Eli Adams just made. Pass interference, defense, number 30. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. So Armani Eli Adams makes a great play, the play before, and while we're yapping about it, he's got to run, get line up, and then cover a fade route deep down the field. And that's all he really had to do. He just that was kind of one of those, I can't give up the big play. Let me just go ahead and take this PI, which isn't the worst case scenario there for Eli Adams on the back end. But a good thing for UCF's offense that we've seen Ryan O'Keefe here, a little bit of questionable status before the game. It was a game time decision. Good to see him out there looking like he's full speed early in this game. Yeah, he didn't play in that second half in a loss to Louisville after having four catches in the first. Bryce Plumley fires over the middle, and Javon Baker has been the man on this drive for the Knights. Your number one, Javon ba uh, Baker, stems up the field, hard in cut, and that is a scary catch for a receiver to make. See, I was a little bit up, and that number 24, the safety, is just ready to absolutely hammer him, but he got it and was able to protect his body, too. See his season numbers there. First down. The ball out late on that scamper up the middle, and FAU looks like they had it. They know. Michael Antoine Jr. at the bottom of the pile. Looked like Draco was involved in forcing a fumble on FAU. What a start. It always happens when you get caught up in there. It's a little bit wet tonight, but you've got to secure that ball with that much contact around you. Johnny Richardson loses it and a mistake for UCF. Just their third turnover of the season. FAU in business. Welcome back to Boca where FAU is off to a phenomenal start. It started off first play of the game. Larry McCammon takes it, fires right up through the middle of that UCF defense. And then off of that big run, they're able to work the play action pass. Get those linebackers to suck up in coverage, work it right behind them for another big game. And then it's Zabari Mobley in the run game as well, finishing that opening beautiful drive for the FAU Owls. And that leads us right to the accurate keys to the game. Well, for UCF, want to see high percentage passes, 65% passing from Plumley, John Rice Plumley tonight. The defense has got to get two takeaways. But for FAU, the key, we talked about the run game, 200 plus rush yards as a team, and it has been a team effort. I want to see Nikosi Perry carry it some, McCammon uh, carry it some. We saw Mobley carry it from, and that defense has got to do a good job too. Well, they are, they are on pace, 68 rushing yards on the first drive. You mentioned that Larry McCammon, 34 yarder to get this game going. Points of emphasis for Florida Atlantic head coach Willie Taggart. He's Happy about the fumble recovery by Trey Koo. And here's FAU's second possession. The ball is out after the big blast by Josh Selizar. That's a tackle for a loss if I've ever seen it, second and long. Selizar right off the corner reads it beautiful. I mean, he is unblocked. They're hoping that that action, the motion, would catch his attention enough so that he slows down so you can get the edge. Well, you can tell. He had no chance right there. He didn't bite on any of the action coming off his crease, uh, face. Really nice play from Selisgar there. Loss of six for the junior team captain, Josh Selisgar. Second and 16. And off to McCannon. Last a couple of defenders and marches his way towards the 15, the original line of scrimmage. Chris, it's so hard when your first play is a loss like that or a penalty. And statistically, you know, the odds of converting a first down significantly decrease. And really what you want to do, your goal is to get back at least to third men. Well, third and ten is not bad considering they're where they were. This is a spot you got to be careful if you're paired. It's like UCF might pressure here to try to really force them and trust their outside DBs and man-to-man -man coverage potentially. Evans the tight end in motion. Third and ten from the 14. 
Perry floats it near sideline. It's incomplete, but a flag. Devontae Brown, the corner, the junior, was in coverage. From up here, it looked like it was just guys running next to each other, a little bit of contact. We'll see what the call is. I didn't see anything egregious from up here, and the it, it ball was the wasn't ball catchable. catchable. No, the ball was way out of bounds. Yeah. That might be what Devontae Brown is campaigning for. There are two fouls on the play, one by each team. Illegal formation, offense, more than four players in the backfield. Pass interference, defense, number seven. Those fouls offset, third down. So penalties on each team, it's fitting, as Kevin Randall explains. Here's another look. Here, you gotta have these guys on the line of scrimmage. You get them all, all four. One of those receivers that acts on top, I believe, would have to step up into the line of scrimmage. That's a careless mistake. Willie Taggart's got to be frustrated by that. But in the end, didn't hurt either team. So another third down for Perry and company. Jay Sean Flack comes in, one of the receivers for FAU on this third down. Empty set on third and ten. Perry sidesteps. Looking, launches deep down the sideline. That one is uncatchable. Yeah, that but we showed that UCF showed blitz the last third down. That one they dropped a bunch into coverage. And Nikosi Perry had nowhere to go. UCF was able to pressure him outside the pocket with just a four-man rush. And Perry, being a six-year senior, made the wise move. Just chuck this thing out of bounds, let us punt, get on to the next series. Xavier Townsend is back to receive this punt from Riley Thompson. After a successful first drive for FAU, off the turnover, it's a punt. Townsend with space, zigzags middle of the field and is brought down right at midfield, maybe a half yard in plus territory. We all want to send our condolences to our vice president of remote production, Steve Karasik, and his family on the passing of his beloved father, Bob. Steve, the entire CBS Sports family is thinking about you, your mom, Irene, wife, Alyssa, children, Eli, and Ben. Let's take a closer look. At the difference of Rice Plumley, week one, week two, Twisted T game day playbook. Well, he definitely saw the field outstanding in their first game against South Carolina State. Had a close to flawless game. And then against Louisville, a little bit higher competition, just locked in to too many of his primary receivers. Should have gotten off of that one, come to his second one, a little bit off target. That's why I was curious to see what Gus Malzahn and Chip Lindsey would do with John Rice Plumley tonight. Started off, gave him a couple of nice completions. It's always a confidence boost for a quarterback to just see that ball completed, get one kind of under your belt, find a rhythm and a groove, and that's what they're hoping to get John Rice Plumley back into that week one rhythm. That's a, a big note on the screen there. Scoreless, last 11 possessions. Now, that last drive by UCF and John Rice Plumley was unlike their drives in the second half against Louisville, where in that game they struggled to move the ball. They moved the ball on the first drive, just yep. ended with a fumble by Richardson. And it's been, that's kind of been the story for UCF ever since that second half. Penalties and mistakes. That was a turnover in the red zone. You can never handle those. From midfield, first down, Isaiah Bowser. Stiff arm with that right hand. I mean, I can't help but think of Nintendo when you got Bowser and stiff arms. <laughs> yes. and it's, it's a great <laughs> running back game. I mean. And then the wild Bowser, I like that even better. But he is, and he's perfect, like his build is perfect. 6'1", 220, just coming at you downhill, looking to punish linebackers and DBs. <laughs> the name certainly fits. Flea flicker here. Bryce Plumley eyes down the field, takes the check down, it is open. That's Ryan O'Keefe right at the sticks. First down for UCF, pick up a bait. Well, that's a solid play, but there was a little bit of mis miscommunication on the outside. I don't, there was a, 
In a flea flicker, you're trying to take a shot, go for the touchdown, and the deepest receiver kind of got, I don't think he got the signal or the call. He was blocking downfield, but at least Plumley heads up play, finds the secondary option for still a nice game. From the 39 on first down, Bowser carves up the middle of the field, dives ahead towards the 35. <laughs> Bowser, you're almost guaranteed to get positive yardage. He's going to fall forward after first contact. But are you getting enough yards? Right. Because one of the stories coming in, only three and a half yards per carry for Bowser. It's a great point, Chris. They would like to got to get a little bit more out of him in the big play category. Second and seven. Plumley has time. Rockets and drops. Javon Baker usually sure-handed. Well, pussy gets shoving after the fact there. That was a frustrated wide receiver. Close to getting a penalty there. But you got to make those catches. You really do. He knows it. It's a nice job by Rice Plumley. John Rice Plumley getting off. He was trying to work the corner on a little smash concept. Came underneath. Quick on a third and seven. Down the seat. Oh, it's dropped again. First it was Baker, then it's Ryan O'Keefe. That was a touchdown for UCF. That's as close to a layup as you will get in college football. O'Keefe streaks up the middle. That ball is perfect in his bread basket. Hits him in the pads. Here's UCF going for it. I like this call. Struggling in the kick game. Fourth down and seven with Bowser the running back. Offense stays on. Offensive line doesn't move, perhaps early movement. Regardless, O'Keefe on the out pattern picks up the first down there. And I don't see a flag down. They they ran that like it was a free play, but it was not. Uh, well, I think FAU was in a little bit of shock that they were going for it at fourth and seven. And you see their offensive line. I think it was a freeze play right there. And they snapped it. And the offensive line was definitely not ready to block. But I do love they went back to O'Keefe after the drop. Fake the reverse. Throw it to the man on the reverse. Long strides for Townsend. Spins inside the 10. And it stood up right near the 8. So they use Townsend in the motion. He gets the ball anyway and picks up 15. It's first and goal. Today's red zone brought to you by Verizon. Seven trips or seven scores. All touchdowns in the red zone in 11 trips. Bryce Plumley keeps. Down the near sideline and scoops in, points the finger, saying put six on the board. John Rice Plumley, his second rushing touchdown of the season. And UCF an extra point away from tying it. After a scoreless second half against Louisville, they needed this drive. And especially after a couple drops, who better to take over than John Rice Plumley, the quarterback, with his legs? That's the one thing you don't know who's going to hurt you with this offense. There's a lot of misdirection. Where's the ball? That time it's Plumlee's opportunity. Makes the most of it. Our story here for UCF. New field goal kicker Colton Boomer, the freshman, replacing Daniel Obarski, and he nails his first extra point. John Rice Plumlee. The wheels, his strength. College football, CBS Sports Network, presented by Geico. Pedal to the metal start in Boca Raton, tied at 7, UCF, FAU. Join us back here Friday night, more college football action. We bring you Boise State visiting UTEP. Kickoff begins 9 Eastern on CBS Sports Network. All right, this is one where you cannot look away. Another play <laughs> will be run, and who knows what will happen on that play. John Rice Plumley. Scampered into the end zone, bouncing back. He had a rough second half against Louisville in the loss. He was just six for 16 in the second half, only 53 passing yards. You can see there already more passing yards in the first quarter of this game. Riker Casey, kickoff specialist for UCF. And Platt. That likes to run it out of the end zone. Bad choice. Only gets to the 12 before he's shot down. Head balls are a quarterback's worst nightmare. You can't 
grab it. You can't hand it off. You can't throw it. But a lot of times you don't get to practice in the rain because everybody has these beautiful indoor facilities. No doubt. So you know what coaches will do? They'll grab a bucket and they pour it all over oh the ball boy. right before practice. And this thing basically becomes one big pile of snot. It's it, basically oh what God. it is. Ew. And then you got to get disgusting. even a little bit more. Yeah. So then just go ahead and take that. And you can see like it is. See that? I know you don't have the best hands, but it is <laughs> oh, hard. So every time you get the ball, you don't know what you're going to get, how your handoff is going to go. If you get a secure grip, it makes everything challenging. So for everybody there tonight, ball security is going to be the utmost priority. Yeah. Good luck throwing that thing. <laughs> You can see it too in this game how you've seen the fumble We've seen a couple of drops holding on to a wet football Certainly a story in the game's first 10 minutes as Mobley gets the first down carry It rained a lot in the hours leading up to this game. It's cleared up now But we're seeing balls just bounce off of receivers. You've got to look it in secure it until the very last minute Johnny Ford, how about Johnny Ford getting involved? The redshirt junior from Miami who last year led the team 830 yards on the ground. He was all conference honorable mention, but not in the lineup in the first three games of the year for FAU. Gets involved here. Non injury reason, but he's back in the lineup for the Owls. Picks up two on that play. Third down and eight. Perry gets a four man rush. High floating pass near sideline. What a catch! Jamal Edrin flexes. First down FAU. Boy, what a beautiful pass. This is their best corner, Monte Brown, too. That ball is just perfectly placed to Edrin, who comes up with it. You talk about in a wet ball scenario, you're focused on that ball. He looked that in with a defender in his face and made the play. 27 yards on third and eight. Sets up a first down handoff. Larry McCammon scoots across the 45 yard line to the 46. I mean, it really felt like UCF liked their matchups on the outside with their corners, and that was their best corner. And they were bringing pressure, and they said, we'll just go man to man on the outside. And when you do that, you run the risk of getting beat like that. And what a boost from all Edgerton being back. That is for FAU. Couple of catches, 47 yards already. Second and six from the 46. It's a screen near side. Burton gonna make that forward. Johnny Ford getting involved on this drive and gets across midfield. Picks up a first down for the outs. Boy, you really have to defend from sideline to sideline if you're UCF for this FAU. Offense swinging it out nice block down the field from the receiver leading the way here comes the tempo Play action in shot range and Perry sees it deep down the seam. It's incomplete And Johnny Ford the intended receiver Brett Deerman, former Middle Tennessee offensive coordinator, made his way over to Florida Atlantic, has experience under Gus Malzahn back in Auburn where he was an analyst. So now it's an interesting thing with him coaching against one of his mentors. If you watch these offenses, there are a lot of similarities. We've already talked a lot about the tempo. We've already seen a lot of the misdirection, the stress that it puts on a secondary, moving the ball down the field, but they both want to run it. Second and ten, handoff to Barry Mobley up the middle. First down yardage. Cars inside the 25, brought down at the 22. Brandon Adams on the stop to pick up a 17. What's the ball handling in the backfield? You never know really where the ball is going to be. And if you hesitate as a defensive lineman or a linebacker. Timeout for injury. It's that hesitation that allows Mobley to get to the next level. And then Brandon Adams, the injured player for UCF. Sophomore out of Atlanta who made the tackle on that big Mobley run. Well, Gus Malzahn, you talk about his legacy with offense, and when you have that much success with his system, you're going to have assistant coaches all over the place, some of the notables. Yeah, it's a pretty impressive list. 
I know I like one of them on there. Mike Norvell has done an outstanding job there at Florida State off to a 3-0 start. I'm going to pump my chest a little bit with that win last night against Louisville. Eli Drinkwitz, great offensive mind at Missouri. Rhett Lashley is off to a strong start at SMU. And Kenny Dillingham, the offensive coordinator at Oregon, also in a, that's a pretty impressive coaching tree right there. Malzahn responsible for two of the four most productive SEC offenses in history in his Auburn days. Mobley on first down, bangs his way up the middle and picks up a chunk on first. So Mobley and McCammon has been the one-two punch for FAU. Last week, Mobley, excellent. And then win against Southeast Louisiana. 146 yards on the ground and had a touchdown. Already eclipsed the 100 yard mark on the ground. You said, Danny, 200's the key. Mobley again. That time, not much. I'm, 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 I'm a little bit surprised. I'm sure that Willie Taggart and Brett Dearman, this is exactly what they wanted to do. But they've been getting pretty good push along the offensive line against this UCF front. You know, some, it's one thing to go misdirection, get the outside, but they've had some nice runs up the middle of that UCF defense, probably most impressive. Key third down inside the red zone. Perry has been content to hand it off on this drive. Back to work through the air on third and four. Right near the sticks on the comeback. He does have the first down. Jaquan Burton, the redshirt junior from Orlando, playing against the team from Orlando. Oh, that's a beautiful route concept for FAU. Burton's just going to run a little snag concept or juke route. Just underneath you find a spot in the zone to get open, and Cozy Perry saw it and hit him. Under 40 seconds left in the first quarter, another handoff. And Ford brought down by the face mask, and the flag is out. On the sweep to the near side. Ford, who's been featured on this drive for the outs. Personal foul, face mask, defense. Number 47, half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. KD McDaniel called. It's about as obvious you can get right there. <laughs> That's a pretty easy call. Johnny Ford asked for it, he gets it. Yeah, clearly, hand wrapped on that face mask. Kind of similar what happened at Alabama-Texas game last weekend did not get called. Sometimes the obvious ones <laughs> That's right. are missed. 11 penalties last week, by the way, for yeah. UCF. They wanted to clean that up. First down and goal from the five. The pitch to Wester on the outside. Turns the corner. Scoots in. Touchdown, FAU. Wester caps off the 12th play, 88-yard drive. Took over five minutes. Fourth receiving touchdown of the year for LaJonte Wester. Suarez, his extra point after the swinging gate goes back to a normal formation. Puts it right through. FAU, 14-7 lead. Step away for 30 seconds. We'll be back from Paradise. Welcome to Lajonte Wester, the speedster. Brett Deerman, the offensive coordinator, told us they like to get him in the slot matched up against safeties. Yep. Also a weapon inside the red zone with his speed. And that was just basically a race to the pylon in the end zone. That might take Wester in a lot of matchups there. If it's a race, it's a speed even on the outside. They love running those gem sweeps, as we talked about. Both these teams have a lot of speed. You're in the state of Florida, you have this much guys, this many guys from the state of Florida. It's a hotbed of talent. You guys can just move. This game is moving, Danny. We're gonna say during the break, man. This is a lot of action in this one. 25 yard line to begin for UCF late in this first quarter. Just eight seconds left in a NASCAR like 
opening quarter in Boca Raton. You know, it's funny you say that, Chris. We used to have, when I was at Florida State, we'd have different tempos, and one of the tempos we had was NASCAR, which was obviously one of our faster ones. Yeah. And it used a lot of code names and things guys can remember for different paces. Love to know what the names. I tried to get it out of Gus Malzahn yesterday about the different speeds. He wasn't giving any way any trade secrets. <laughs> wasn't having it. Yeah, yeah, this is a big, important bounce back week for UCF coming off of their loss to Louisville. This could be the last play of the first quarter, and Johnny Richardson goes nowhere. Might not even have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage. It is a loss of one with Eddie Williams on the tackle. First quarter is done from FAU Stadium. And the hometown Owls on top, 14-7. As we start the seconds, great atmosphere here at FAU Stadium. Pressure on UCF here. And they're coming off of a loss, and I don't want to say freak out week, but it seems like every time UCF loses, it's kind of on, on their side, their, their fans. It's a, it's a time for a little bit of panic. Yeah. Lost to Louisville last week. They lost to Louisville the year before. So that was like a game that was circled on the calendar. And the fact that they couldn't come up with a win there puts a lot of onus on them coming in this week. This is a fan base that has massive expectations of what they want their program to be. And they've set a high standard. And Scott Frost ran the table in 2017. You know, they were co-national championship uh, champions in their mind, which I had no problem with whatsoever. And then Gus comes in from Auburn. He's a big name coach. They want this program to be a national powerhouse and move to the Big 12. You know that they're going to be able to do that, but they want to win games. Like, they thought like this year's team could be what Cincinnati did last year. They already suffered that setback in their second game of the season to Louisville. To start the second quarter. From their own 24, here's John Rice Plumley. Pressure immediately escapes it, shoving off the athleticism, which had him as a wide receiver at Ole Miss. Steps out of bounds after a good pickup. Uh, FAU tried to sneak in a corner blitz, and they had him on the outside. Here he comes. Watch this corner where he comes from. You're in that hash. It's very popular blitz. Safety's over the top. He's got him. Rice Plumley's right there. He's dead. And then. Very similarly to what we saw Bryce Young do last week against Texas as well. Able to evade that one defender and get positive yardage. Third down and four. John Rice Plumley first down. And he's not afraid to get hit as a quarterback. He's clocked by Wansley for FAU, but a big pickup on third down. Plus yards on the run, then on first down off the quick tempo. Ryan O'Keefe, it sails over his head and incomplete. I was getting a hand on it, but that's it. All right, Chris, that's a very simple pass. Those are the things that John Rice Plumley needs to clean up because you're supplementing the run. That's that's basically an extended handoff. That's a pretty easy completion that you've got to make. That ball was a little bit high coming in. That was one of the keys of the game. 65 percent your percentage on the night. Those are the ones you got to make so that you can get, even if it's just a couple yards, it's basically a run play, but you got to complete it first. Got to make the legs. Yep. Before you start thinking about the threes. <laughs> Steal the basketball yep. terms. Gamble in motion. Second and ten, just shy of midfield. Screen set up for Baker. The elusive Baker slides past midfield and gets chopped down at the 46. Yeah. See, those types of plays, Chris, like that was the same, and that was a great example, the same exact play we just saw just to the other side. Those are just long handoffs. You're getting to your great athletes in space, and you got five yards. 35. John Rice Plumley's nearly picks. O'Keefe was the intended receiver. Jaden Williams, the nickelback, who's been getting rave reviews from the Florida Atlantic staff, nearly had an interception. Yeah, pretty good pass protection. Rice Plumley's trying to throw to that curl route. Looks like the ball might have been tipped. Came off just a little bit funny. And remember the, the, the kicking problems they have. We go for it. You like the decision here? I do. They they check the books. They check the analytics. Looks like Gus might be waiting a little bit longer here to see. Got a timeout, but I like it. 
They do snap it on fourth and five. Brumley's pressure. Rifles and caught. Strong hands by Baker inside the 30. First down UCF on a fourth and five conversion. I like it even better now, Chris. I mean, it's always one of those ones where everybody loves to go for it. You got to convert these, but they like their matchups on the outside. It's actually pretty good defense, but Baker just mans up just overpowers the DB, steps right in front of it. Isaiah Bowser spinning like a top on first down. Not much there. And UCF in the middle of the field. They did the same thing against Louisville a week ago. He's fourth down and fives in between the 40s. That smells on his team. Not afraid to go for it. No gain on first down. Richardson in motion. Big to Richardson. Give it to Richardson. On the flat. Snoops inside. Maneuvers past the 25. And then it's hot time by Day Day Hill. You know, those fourth down decisions are so hyper analyzed by a lot of people. But I tell you, from the player's standpoint, players on the offensive side of the ball absolutely love when you go for it on fourth down. It sends a message to your team that we believe in you. We're going to give you a chance to go make the play rather than play conservatively. Well, who's going to make the play on third down and five from the 24? A blitz. Plumley slant is incomplete. Baker, the receiver, and he was hounded. Smoke munching in coverage. Remember, we saw a corner blitz the last time out. We saw another cornerback. Remember that hash feels like something FAU wanted to try to accomplish. Here comes the corner blitz from the outside, but watch the back. Bowser step up, protect Plumley's backside, because if he doesn't pick that blitz up, he's going to get hammered before he can get rid of that pass. Well, here's a freshman, Colton Boomer, his first field goal attempt of the season, replacing Daniel Obarski, who struggled over the last couple of seasons. A field goal by Boomer. Yes, sir. And isn't that a boost for UCF after Gus Malzahn's kicker Daniel Obarski missed a 32-yarder last week. Boomer capitalizes on a 42-yarder this week to pull within four. Tomorrow morning, 9 Eastern, stay up to date, most recent NFL news as our crew offers insight, opinions, and previews all before week two kickoff. Watch that other free game show right here on CBS Sports Network. Oh, there's a Dolphins jersey. You're a Dolphins fan, I learned last I week. I am, yeah. I grew up down here, was a big Dan Marino fan. We got off to a nice start. 1-0, they play the Ravens this weekend. A lot of eyes on Tua Tagovailoa. Producer Don't Tony. get me started, or we'll just start into a Dolphins <laughs> podcast here on the air. Producer Tony <laughs> wanted us to stop because he's a Jets fan. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> AFC East perhaps goes through Josh Allen these days. Jay Sean Platt back to return as Riker Casey gets it off after a UCF made field goal, which certainly has to feel good for the Knights. The struggles that they've had kicking field goals last week. UCF has high standards. We've talked about it. This is why the pressure is on this week. They lost last week to Louisville and in a six conference championships. They've been one of the most winningest college football teams really all together since that big year with Scott Frost, that undefeated 13-0 back in 2017. When I was at Florida State, we played against UCF, and they were, you know, an upstart program that was trying to, you know, make that transition to the FBS, and they had some dudes. I mean, it always felt like there was an opportunity for another school in Florida to take advantage of some of the talent. I love how dudes has just suddenly become an accepted football <laughs> yes, term. Just like yes. everybody, everybody understands what you're talking about. Yep. He's a dude right here, Lejante Wester. He is slippery, even more so in this Florida humidity. Solid gain on first down, and he gets right near the marker. Yeah, a little reverse action. It's always, where's that ball? Where's that ball? Pretty nice job, just at least slowing him down from Brash, number 33. He gets it again, does Wester on a screen. Jumps ahead for a couple. I don't know, do you feel, Chris, I felt like the first touchdown tonight for UCF was a sigh of relief. Like, there is more pressure on UCF than there is on FAU. Like, FAU, this is the, a game they've had circled. They would love to win this game. But for UCF, it definitely has more of a 
we cannot lose this game. And you almost get that feeling when you're watching this game unfold. It's like pressure on one side, opportunity yes. on the other side. Perry, hands, McKinnon. And it'll be third down and long. The junior out of Birmingham, Alabama. Just like his offensive coordinator, Brett Dearman. Both Alabama guys, and Brett Dearman always loves his Alabama guys. 36 here, I imagine Wester will get a lot of attention. Yeah. <laughs> He's in the slot at the top of the screen. Third and six from the 38. Barry's pressure, setting up a screen, passes, batted down. Matthew Alexander involved for UCF, and it brings up fourth down. UCF is not afraid to bring pressure on third down and trust their guys. Perry knows he's coming. This is a six-year senior. He knows he's got to get rid of the football, but a nice job batting it down. Sometimes the more frustrating thing for a quarterback is not taking a sack. It's when you know you've got to play, and you can see it, and it gets batted down. Raymond Morris Brash. I mentioned the great pass rusher. Coaches thought this could be the week where he'd really get unleashed and become that game wrecker. Riley Thompson on the punt. Tries to angle it, coffin corner, far side, and what a bounce. Sits up inside the five yard line, down at the four. Special teams. Riley Thompson is fired up here. The first coach, 0-2 to 11, name on the field. Of course, legend at Miami as well. And doesn't get really much bigger name in this area than Howard Schnellenberg. John Rice Plumley, back to work deep in his own territory on first down. F.A. Hughes says that's incomplete. Ryan O'Keefe says, no, it's not. Give me the catch. And it's ruled a catch at least for now. And a pick up a five. Jaleel McCray, the freshman for FAU, has had a great start to the year. Fourteen tackles coming in. Spent some time at Florida State. So Willie Taggart's team, great start to the game. That first drive, about as perfect as you're going to get. Started out with a big run, 32, or make that 34 yards by Larry McCammon to open this game. Capped off with a 15-yard touchdown by Zuberi Mobley. Put the team ahead, 14, 7 to nothing, and they play the front-running role in this game. Let's tie it at 7. FAU scored the second touchdown before UCF followed with the field goal. Former Florida State head coach. Yeah, it, I would say FAU was a place at one time would attract coaches because it's a nice place to live, right? But now it's becoming a place where coaches are realizing, hey, I can go out and win there. And I can have an opportunity, if you want it, to maybe parlay it into a bigger job. You know, and it's really become a place where you can win, you can have some success here. And I do you know, Howard Schnellenberger's names on the field. I called some games. For FAU when they played at Lockhart Stadium, which was down the road before Lauderdale. He brought this stadium here. That was a big push for him to have this. That's a beautiful backdrop, too. And, I mean, the coaching trees throughout these staffs connected, and even the players playing for different coaches is that sweet. For Richardson, sets up a third down and short. Like John Rice Plumley, for example, who was at Ole Miss, he played for Lane Kiffin, who was the coach here at FAU. A third and short going deep. Over the top is Alec Holler. Holler with no one in front of him. He's being chased by Hill. And he's pushed out of bounds right around the 25. Third and short. So how about you go over the top? And a first down for the Knights. Well, how many times have we seen outside perimeter sweeps, outside throws? So you're really worried. They're set it up right there on the outside. They fake that little bubble screen. And meanwhile, Holler just goes right up the middle of that defense. That's what happens. You set up. It's a game of chess. You're setting up plays. UCF set that one up perfectly. 
64 yards on third down and short. Bobble, but a clean by Ryan O'Keefe. He eventually holds on to it and scoops down the near sideline and gets inside the 10 yard line. So the mesh point looked a little awkward there. McKiffin ran him out, but a big up of 17 yards. It really did. I mean, for us, it's hard to see where the ball is. Not for the players. Let's see this play at the end there. Thought it might have been a horse collar, but I think he did a pretty good job letting go. I don't think he got too much of that collar. First and goal. Here's Bowser to the four. What a fun game. These kind of teams are just going at each other. A few big plays. And it's like counter punches, like a little bit like a heavyweight fight. Man, this game has a backyard element to it. Yes. Guys who grew up playing against each other, with each other. UCS made the trip down I-95 here to Boca. Roll out on second and goal. Rice Plumley keeps going to the top. Wow. Touchdown, UCF. Rice Plumley amongst the clouds. You want to hype up your offensive lineman, your teammates as a quarterback. You make a play like this. He decided there, I'm getting in the end zone no matter what. I told you he was an unbelievably athletic quarterback. He showcased some of that athleticism and toughness there. What a run by John Rice Plumley going upstairs. What's his vertical? <laughs> John Rice Plumley from five yards away. Extra point. No good. The kicking troubles continue for UCF. Colton Boomer misses. Remember John Elway in the Super Bowl did the helicopter? That didn't look anywhere good. This one did. He was up in the air, going up the elevator and into the end zone. UCF takes the lead. On CBS Sports Network, presented by Geico. Chris Lewis and Danny Cannell with you for a fun one in Boca Raton. UCF off of a John Rice Plumley leap into the end zone. A 16 to 14 lead. They missed the extra points. So FAU to get the football. Yeah, fun game with the tempo, fun atmosphere. You got fans from both teams here in attendance. John Rice Plumley have bounced back from his struggles in the second half against Louisville a week ago. Already 170 or 69. Well, trying to round up there. <laughs> Yards for him. <laughs> in this first half. And then those two rushing touchdowns as well. FAU 2 and 1, their loss to Ohio. And UCF, their loss to Louisville last week. Platt says, "Ah, uh, nobody will get this one." Into the end zone for a touchback. So to take a look at our Dr. Pepper Fansville King. Mentioned fans from each squad here as these schools separated by about three hours. FAU, their highest allotment of student tickets handed out for this game. That student section promotes a rowdy across the way from us. I, the little rain, thunder, lightning didn't impact them at all. I saw them, I was driving in here a couple hours before the game. They were already tailgating for a couple hours. They were ready for this one. They deliver. It's great atmosphere. FAU is ready from the 25. Play action to McKim and Perry unleashes incomplete. Down the far sideline looking for Jamal Ledrin. Brandon Adams in coverage. Ledrin 6'3", 210 pounds. From right down the road in Fort Lauderdale. He's a big target. Yet Perry, you can clearly tell, trust him on the outside. Like, I'm going to give him that big body and give him opportunities. They connected on one earlier. That was well defended there. Second down, give. McCammon is loose. Past the 45 and shot down near midfield. Larry McCammon keeps on marching for FAU, a gain of 24. Right up in there, missed tackles, an opportunity for number 27 there, Walter Yates. Got to make that first contact tackle as FAU is trying to really put the pressure, get UCF's defense on their heels. You go up tempo 
so that defenses just get set because they have to give you a kind of a base call. And then once you figure out their base call when you're going tempo, then you can start dialing up your favorite plays for that base defense. Well, you mentioned it kind of does start with that ground game, and that's been the base of FAU's success offensively. They averaged through three weeks. Remember, they played week zero, 41 points per game. Second and nine from midfield. Zuberi Mobley has the outside. Rumbles to near the first down, sticks at the 41-yard line. Boy, really impressed with both of these backs, both McCammon and Mobley. Little hop step to the outside, jump cut. They got third and short. Yeah, they didn't give him the first down. It was near the marker, but a yard shy of it. They announced over the PA first down and definitely two down territory. I wouldn't hate a shot play here. Mobley, second effort, first down and more near the 30. Stiff arm doesn't work. He's ripped down by Damari Henderson, but a big run. Make that Devon Wilson on the tackle. Big third down run for FAU. Mobley coming through. UCF is really having a hard time. Slam down, body slam down. On the 31, keep it going on the ground. Mobley, another explosive run to the 15. First down now. How many times have we seen some uh, arm tackles? Travis Williams, the defensive coordinator, looking on. Trying to get his team a breather. Hey, he they did call a timeout. Out. Yeah, that's what I thought. I was wondering if he had that kind of power. He was telling Gus, hey, man, let me give my guys a rest. And that, that is an effort thing when you're seeing a lot of arm tackles. We saw three on this drive alone. You're not going to bring down these backs with just your arms. You've got to get there with the full force of your body and be ready for contact. Because these backs are just shaking off the arm tackles. I think that was a wise use of the time out there. Just make sure you get set, take a breath. I mean, this feels like it's going to be a tight game coming down the wire. If you can get a stop here and hold them to a field goal. The crucial stop for UCF. One of the fun things about this week, the intertwinement between stats. Brent Deerman, who's the offensive coordinator for FAU, was an analyst with Auburn. When Travis Williams, the defensive coordinator for UCF, was an analyst at Auburn. They were an office away from each other. They would design plays against each other to see, hey, would this work against this defense? It's it's such a great chess match. You know, such a chess, chess match between coordinators, and sometimes the most heated matches take place on the same staff, like you're talking about. But I was really impressed with Travis Williams yesterday. He's got a great energy. He's got a great defensive mind. We'll see where his career takes him. I think he might be a head coach somewhere sooner rather than later. 16-yard line where it's marked after the timeout. First and 10. Bobble on the exchange. Ball on the grass. Looks like UCF on top of it. Indeed. Brandon Jennings recovers the fumble. And just like that, FAU's big chunks on the ground all for naught. Ball handling is so important to Cozy Perry, sticking the ball in the belly of the back to run that little read option down the line of scrimmage. And you're, you're, he's got his eyes down the field. When he pulls it out, sometimes you get caught up. Johnny Ford's coming back, number five, and it just, just lost it there. You know, sometimes when you're doing a lot of these ball handling uh, misdirection plays and trying to keep the defense guessing, it can get in there and just get caught up sometimes and hit by your own player. Well, Johnny Ford, remember, he didn't play the first three weeks. This is his first game action. Is that some of the things that could come when you're, you know, making your early time in the season when the team's Definitely. hitting the mid-mark? Mid Definitely. If you don't have that many reps, and some guys are different in practice, too. You know, you're just you're not going quite as fast, and all of a sudden you change just a little bit when things are full go. So one fumble in the red zone for each team in this game. John Rice Plumley with a couple of tight ends to his left. Richardson, the motion man. Play action on second and eight. Tucks and runs, slides, and then gets hit late before the 30, and there's that flag. on Jaleel McCray, number 14. He sees the quarterback running. 
Mm -hmm. And that's just a foolish penalty. He Could knew that it be right with targeting. That's a good call, Chris. I think it. I will see. We don't yep. have the microphone <laughs> by Kevin Randall. We yeah. can read lips and no signals. That's with targeting. <laughs> outstanding job using those lips very clearly. We saw those. Good job, Chris. We saw that. I read the lips of being confirmed, <laughs> and he has been disqualified. I didn't do as well a job with the lips that time, but I knew that, that thumb throwing you out, I know what that means. <laughs> Jaleel McCray. That's what the rule is for. Protect against those types of hits. Young player, he's got a bright future ahead of him. You know the staff really likes him. He's frustrated himself. He knows, I mean, he knows. And his reaction, as soon as he hit Plumley, I think he knew. He kind of pounded the ground. He's like, oh no. He's like, I just, I just did it. You know, yeah. he's kind of new. Remember the rule change from a couple years back. Players that are disqualified for targeting can remain on the sideline. Used to have to be removed from the sideline. That's no longer the case. So it has to be disappointing for McCray. Again, one of the many Florida products playing in this in-state game. Johnny Richardson, look at those wheels! Turns on the Jets! Down near the 10-yard line. Explosive run before Adams tracked him down. Johnny Richardson's only 5'7", 170 pounds. He's a little hard to find. And it looked like he got just kind of lost in the middle of that defense and found his way on the outside. Touchdown saving tackle from Amani Eli Adams. After a 50-yard run, Richardson gets it on the pitch near the option, and he is stopped at the six. Morvin Joseph, credit for the tackle for FAU as UCF is on the move. Johnny Richardson at the end of the play there. Might have had a little face mask on that one. He was coming down. They want to go fast after those. Both, both these teams, very similar mindsets. They want to go fast after the big chunk plays to try to double up on and get another one. Under center for one of the rare times, and that's what happens. The ball comes out. Mentioned uh, and seen Rice Plumley the last couple of weeks under center much. And FAU says it's their football. So do the referees. shocked Chris that he was up there that ball really never looked like it got to John Rice Plumley's hands from the center but very uncharacteristic of UCF to get under center they're primarily a shotgun team and you saw it right away I mean you saw it like oh but you were almost as surprised as I was and it, it's it's the simplest thing in the world it's one of the first things you learn how to do when you play football got to make sure you get that exchange most basic fundamental thing in the game. And yet, in today's game, it's something that a lot of teams overlook. Merrifield recovered the fumble for FAU deep in their own territory. They want to change field position. Burton, the intended receiver. And a flag is out by the 40. Corey Thornton was the one next to Burton. Pass interference, defense, number 14. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. There's a grab right there. It's subtle, but it is there. Good job from the officials. Seeing Thornton's hand there. And it, it, sometimes you get away with it, sometimes you don't. I mean, it's a technique that a lot of DBs will use. Just that time he got his hand caught in the cookie jar. That's a big penalty. Gives FAU yes. some room. And Johnny Ford will use that room to cross the middle of the field a couple of times and get to the 21. So just a one yard gain on first down. Nikosi Perry, he's been relatively quiet. Seven for 13. He does have that touchdown, 70 yards. Meanwhile, for UCF, 
penalties continue to be a story. 10 plus penalties in their first two games. 11 last week against Louisville. Second and eight. Ford again tries to get the edge. Does it get there? First one there was Tremont Morris Brash, and then he got some help. Much needed stop for a loss there for UCF. But the penalties, Chris, I mean, I, they're hard to explain. We asked Gus Malzahn about it yesterday, and he said, hey, we're going to get it fixed. And we asked Travis Williams about it. He said, hey, we have an accountability on the defense side of the ball. If one guy gets a penalty, the whole team has to, you know, do up downs and is punished for it. And you harp on it, you harp on it, but for whatever reason, this team has just struggled. And on offense, they're getting touchdowns called back. They are killing themselves with penalties. Three touchdowns this season in two weeks called back with penalties, including two last week in the Louisville loss. Third and 11, Perry to a backpedaling Wester. Looks to be short of the first down. And that's one of those where he had some room, but a low throw, and it's fourth down. I think Perry was under a little duress there, too, which is why that ball was underthrown. Timeout, UCF. That is their second. It'll be 30 seconds. So a timeout to preserve some clock with 2.11 to play in quarter number two. Coming up at the half, Kevin Carter, Houston Nutt, Brent Stover. They'll break down today's action, update us on today's top games. Verizon Halftime Reports. This first half amongst the better of the day throughout college football. This one's had action. We've seen turnovers. We've seen big plays. And right now, UCF is set to get the football back with 2-11 to work with. And of course, given their tempo, that is more than enough time. Travis Williams got to be frustrated with some of the penalties that have hurt this team tonight. That was a big stop, though, and now an opportunity for UCF to kind of, you know, we talk about the stress they're under. They need to, like, an opportunity for them to go in with a little bit more of a commanding lead at halftime if they get points on here. I love the time out there. Hey, we're going to get the ball back. Two minutes, plenty of time to just run our normal offense. We don't even have to go super fast. Townsend is back to return for the Knights. Let's it bounce. Let's it roll to the 16. That's a good punt by Riley Thompson there. And again, kind of deep in your own territory. You change ends of the field, and his staff and his teammates recognize that, giving him the dap as he goes to the sideline. So the attention goes to John Rice Plumley. And this is one of those areas where if you're a younger, you know, not younger, he's not young, but he hasn't played much quarterback. He's played, you know, he's, he's been looking for this opportunity. Two minute drill is one of those ones that kind of separates veterans from younger players. You just, it, you cut, there's a more comfortable level when you're running a two minute offense, the more you've done it. If somebody who hasn't done it, this is an opportunity for him to get these reps and valuable time. Remember, this is his first year playing quarterback since as a freshman with Ole Miss in 2019. He then went to receiver for the next couple of seasons. Johnny Richardson on first down, and that gets the clock moving and sets the tempo for this UCF drive. Pick up a five on first down. Could see all the room that UCF has to cover. Plumley. Flush to the far side, and John Rice Plumley scoots out of bounds, still a few yards shy of a first down. Jamie Petway chased him out of bounds, and here's an interesting one here. If you don't pick up this first down and it's an incomplete pass, now you're giving FAU some time. Yes, and they go fast as well, so it does feel like one of those critical moments. FAU still has all three timeouts. Third and three, keep it on the ground. Rice Plumley needed a 31, he gets there. Powers through, clock stops, but they move the chains. Get back up, another play call. I still want to, you want to, surprise they're going a little bit slow, not too bad. We'll get this thing off. But soon here, you got to start moving a little bit quicker. Claps for the snap. Has time, steps up, guns it over the middle, and out of the hands. Incomplete. All right, 
So Chris, when we, when one of the keys of the game was John Rice Plumley's completion percentage. We're gonna have to do some math because he's had at least three drops tonight from his receivers. Amori Gamble gonna hold on to that one, the tight end. I mean, that was a perfect throw. That's gotta be made, that catch by the tight end Gamble. Gotta pull that one in, especially in these situations. Second down, draw play, Richardson. Tries to get outside like he always wants to, but that time FAU's defense on top of it. Morvin Joseph to tackle. And under a minute left with the clock moving, it's third down. 50 seconds. And moving. 45. Get it off. Rice Plumley pressured up the middle. Big hits. Richardson lets it bounce in front of him and completes. Yeah, that was a big hit to the quarterback, John Rice Plumley. He shakes that one off. Yeah, he's trying to look down the field. And a great job of pressuring him there from the second level. Jalen Wester, the younger brother of LaJonte Wester, has been making all the plays on offense for FAU. He's back to return this kick. Well, Mitch McCarthy, the new punter, a freshman for UCF, taking the role of Andrew Osteen. This one's off. LaJonte Wester crawls forward. Doesn't get much on the return. And with just 29 seconds left in the half, Danny, I would ima imagine you don't push it here if you're FAU, or maybe you're down two, you try to get one big play. If this was the NFL, and you had Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady, you try to steal some points here. I think most college teams will feel comfortable, especially FAU, you're two points down. I think they'll feel content taking an E and going to the half. But I mean, you got three timeouts, you only got to get 40 yards. Maybe a little bit longer than that. I mean, Nikosi Perry might not be Aaron Rodgers, but he is a sixth year quarterback. Or you run one play, see how it goes. If it's, you know, a sack or a loss, then you just eat it and go to half. It's a big play, then all of a sudden use your timeouts and you go. Remember, it's a wet, moist day outside, so ball security. An emphasis on first and ten. There he looks, middle of the field. LaJonte Wester cuts up the field to the 35. And on the sideline of FAU, they do take a timeout. I like it. I like an aggressive mindset. I mean, we were talking about it earlier with UCF going for it. Timeout. FAU. That is their first. It'll be 30 seconds. UCF going for it on fourth downs. 29 seconds. All your timeouts. Willie Tiger using one right there. Hey, let's try to take some shots down. See if we can get a long field goal attempt. Offense over 530 yards per game through three weeks. They do have the ability to move the ball, move it quickly. Now, of course, Suarez, the kicker, as long as 43, perfect outside of 40 this season. It was big in the week zero win against Charlotte. See the target for FAU to get to. Have to do that in 21 seconds. Played in 24 games, did Perry at Miami. Started nine. Here, his second year at FAU. He's been open about how he was, well, he said immature coming in. He's matured so much over the years. Perry, high floating pass is incomplete. Jamal Edrin, the intended receiver, and there's 16 seconds left for a 33. One of the things about Barry, he's had five different offensive coordinators in six years of playing. Everybody talks about player movement, but coaching movement has always been for real. Do you know how hard that is on a player, too, to never really get comfortable in a system? It's credit to him, the job he's done the last two years here, getting some stability. Third and three. Mobley does have the first down. Across the 40. Keeps the bowling ball alive to the 45. With 10 seconds left, FAU sideline. They do reluctantly take the timeouts. <laughs> Timeout, FAU. That is their second. It'll be 30 seconds. 
But you got one more timeout. You got time to run one more play here. See if you can get either 15, 20 yard chunk play or you're in range for a Hail Mary. You take a shot at the end zone for the last play of the half. And this is one of those things where there it takes trust in your quarterback that he's not going to make a foolish play. You know, he's going to cough the ball up taking a sack or throw a pick six going the other way. And I think that speaks to the confidence they have in their six year senior. It's one of the things that FAU it's built up is one of the biggest home games in program history. When you have that kind of hype going into the game, all the students in attendance, the highest allotment of student tickets for this game, it is a luxury when you have an experienced quarterback, you know, somebody who's played at Miami, who's done it on the road in some hostile environments in the past. He's not going to be phased by a situation of this game being built up the way it was for FAU. Yep. See what he does with 10 seconds left from the 45. Barry steps up, has pace. Tries to angle outside, dives ahead, has the first down. Three seconds left. And the clock should stop for the first down. And now you should be able to take a Hail Mary shot. All the time. And launch this as high as you can and make sure it gets to the end zone. Last play of the first half from the 44. And Perry backpedals and just has to get rid of it out of bounds. <laughs> all that, all that strategy for a, an incomplete. Well, that's what happens when Trayvon Morris Brash comes right through and puts the pressure on. What a fun first half from Paradise. UCF and FAU, a fun battle in the Sunshine State. 16-14, UCF leads. Stay tuned after the commercial break. Teammates loving that film session when they watch that back. But of course, a little bit more if they win the game. Well, it's UCF to get the football to start half number two. They won the toss, they deferred. And this is Ryan O'Keefe on the return and angles his way past the 20 to the 26 yard line. Let's take a look at the first half stats. They're brought to you by Ryan. How about that? 192 yards rushing for FAU. And Nikosi Perry, he's been efficient. They haven't hit that big play. Something to keep an eye on the FAU Owls if they're able to open up the pass game a little bit more. And for UCF, very balanced attack. It's the turnovers that have cost them in the red, the red area, or else they would be in control of this game a little bit more than they are just with a two-point lead. At halftime, the rain started to come down more significantly than at any point during the game. A light drizzle as we start the second half. And the first play of half number two is a run for Isaiah Bowser, who barrels his way to the 31. John Rice Plumley against Nikosi Perry, the starting quarterbacks for each squad. Really impressed with both of these quarterbacks, what they've done. Nikosi Perry hasn't had to do as much yet because of the way they've been running the football. Speaking of running the football, getting Johnny Richardson involved was a point of emphasis from Gus Malzahn this week. That time, not much, and it brings up third down and about four. Second half last week, UCF did not score. They had a 14 point mark and finished the game with 14 points. On 34, it's a slant that's complete to Ryan O'Keefe. He has the first down for UCF. That's clearly the guy that he likes going to on third down is O'Keefe. That was just an easy slant right on the outside, man to man coverage. Delivers a perfect dart right into his chest. O'Keefe did have that drop. Now, that's one of the things you go back to your guy on the sideline and say, hey, don't worry about it, shake it off. They came right back to him to play after that one, and clearly a big part of the second half game plan. Remember, O'Keefe did not play in the second half last week. O'Keefe gets the flip back here on the reverse and head first to the 45 yard line of FAU. As the Knights are in plus territory as they're marching on their first drive of half two. This little end around, a lot of misdirection in both of these offenses. Of course, the tempo on the first drive of the half. John Rice Plumley is pressured and gets past the 45. And got some extra curricular activity away from the screen. Out from one of the receivers matching up against the corner. 
Wormley does scramble to make it third down in about a half a yard. They have run that little bubble screen so many times in the first half. The halftime adjustments, FAU saw it coming, and Plumley was able to go back. Now we got a little wild Bowser formation, Isaiah Bowser coming back in a wildcat. Break out the controller on the Nintendo. It's the wild Bowser on third and one. Super Mario reference if you can get it. <laughs> Play clock winding down. And a timeout. So while Bowser takes a little bit to get unleashed. Timeout. UCF. That is their first. It'll be 30 seconds. So a third down upcoming, more time for Gus Malzahn and company. But here's the extracurricular that I was talking about after that last play. Uh, Baker mixing it up against Munjin. TJ <laughs> Young told us this week, who's the safety for FAU, that Smoke Munjin, his fellow member of the secondary, loves to talk. Yeah, and I, I'm sure that's probably had something to do with it. I'm not saying he instigated it. But man, those DBs and those wide receivers, they will yap nonstop all night long. Just glad no penalty was thrown because that was pretty, pretty far after the play. It didn't look too, too bad. That is a timeout. Third down and short. It's Plumley in the shotgun. John Rice Plumley has the first down. It was interesting. They showed the Bowser formation, the wild Bowser, and then had to call timeout. Clearly didn't like the defense they saw, so they went back with John Rice Plumley, a quarterback, a little more traditional set. And with Bowser and Plumley as the options, those are pretty big backs, essentially, able to carry the ball in the backfield with the way Rice, uh, John Rice Plumley runs the ball. Bowser this time up the middle, crashes to the 35, inside the 35 to the 34. So the fifth year Northwestern transfer, Isaiah Bowser being featured on the first drive of the half. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I feel like UCF wants to try to take control of this game. The first drive of the second half is always so critical for both teams. Halftime adjustments, but with UCF with a two-point lead, they want to try to start separating themselves in the second half. We got Towson, the one in motion. Plumley lasers it. It's complete. Javon Brown has a first down for UCF, a pickup of 14. Beautiful touch pass there. I've really been impressed with the way John Rice Plumley has thrown the ball. It wasn't his best performance last week. Sticks in the belly. Just a simple slant route to Javon Baker. He's been on target tonight. Drives four minutes old. Here is John Rice Plumley on the draw and picks up a yard before he is slung down. Eddie Williams for FAU on the tackle. So another red zone trip for UCF. Today's red zone is brought to you by Verizon. Two touchdowns inside the red zone. When they've converted in the red zone, this season coming in, it's been touchdowns. They had struggled kicking field goals with Daniel Obarski, their kicker coming into this, 0 for 2. They bench him for Colton Boomer. Second down and nine. Play action. Roll out and a throw to the flat. Alec Holler had a big catch in the first half. Maneuvers his way inside the five-yard line. He has a first down for UCF. Here they are hustling up to the football to try to keep FAU on their heels and go for that back-to-back -back punch. One big play could lead to another. John Rice Plumley keeps, tries to scoot into the end zone, snaking his way there. He's cut down before that. Oh, ben Joseph, credit for the tackle. That tactic that teams will use after a big play, it's like a jab cross combo, like a boxing, where you kind of stun them with that first one, then you go for the knockout blow while they're kind of stunned still. Didn't work that time for UCF. Now they bring in the big fellas to try to punch this one in. Wild Bowser here with Isaiah Bowser in the wild cat. Gets the snap, off edge near side, and can walk in. Touchdown, UCF. Isaiah Bowser just is able to get to the outside. 
Everybody was bunched up. There's so many guys inside. The action's moving to the left. Brings the backers across, and Bowser's able to bounce it to the outside for the easy walk-in touchdown. His fifth rushing touchdown of the season. He came in third in the nation with four. And the extra point this time by Colton Boomer is through. He missed one earlier on. Well, Bowser comes in in the wild Bowser formation. It's about as easy as it gets. UCF looking to take control in the second half. One of the biggest home games in years for FAU. Right now down nine to UCF. Take a look at the AP poll. The AP top 10 powered by Ram Trucks. Danny, the game that just catches my attention considering we're locked in on this one. It's Oklahoma against Nebraska because in that one you have Dylan Gabriel, who's the quarterback for Oklahoma, <laughs> yeah. former quarterback for UCF, yep. against Nebraska, who just got rid of Scott Frost, who's the former coach at UCF, who led that perfect season. Yes, a lot of tie-ins with that game. Uh, Jeff Levy, the offensive coordinator, was with Dylan Gabriel that year when Dylan Gabriel led the country in passing for the UCF Knights. And boy, what a beatdown Oklahoma put on Nebraska. Didn't matter who was coaching that game. <laughs> that was, and then how about Clemson? I would keep my eye on that game. Louisiana Tech only up 13 to 6. Clemson's offense is still struggling to get things going. Isaiah Bowser does not struggle to get things going when he's in range for a touchdown. Five rushing touchdowns already this season in the third game for UCF. That was a 12-play, 73-yard drive that opened up the second half of action. So it's time for FAU's first possession of half two. Tomorrow, it's another NFL on CBS doubleheader, beginning with the Patriots meeting the Steelers in Pittsburgh's home opener, or the Dolphins battling the Ravens. Later, huge showdown in Texas. Joe Burrow's Bengals take on the Cowboys. We'll get you set for the day's action beginning noon Eastern. JB and the guys on NFL Today. All hail Sunday. It's the NFL on CBS. Cannot wait for some of those matches. 0-1 Bengals, 0-1 Cowboys. Somebody's going to 0-2. And then how about my Dolphins going to the Ravens to take on Lamar Jackson? They have impressive playing against two. The New York Jets, week one. <laughs> the Dolphins also beat up the Ravens last year. I think it was on a Thursday night game. So yep. that was going to be a fun one to watch this week. First down run by Larry McCammon. I think it's a critical drive here, Chris, for FAU. I mean, they, they've been doing a fantastic job. They delivered the first punch of the game with that first touchdown. Now they've got to start response because you don't want to fall further behind UCF in what feels like a sort of shootout type of game in the first half going possession for possession. A blitz here from UCF. Barry sees it, but skies the pass over the head of Wester, and it's third and seven. One thing to note, now it is not raining now, but it did rain some at halftime. I was looking out. There was some rain coming down. That ball just looked a little bit off. I don't know if it slipped out of his hand. We did the wet ball demonstration earlier, which was outstanding by job you, Chris. Just outstanding Pardon work. Me, I didn't do yeah. that, but drop the ball. But that was perfect. That was exactly <laughs> what I wanted to demonstrate. It does make it trickier to get a hold of that ball and get a grip and be accurate on those passes. That one looked like it just got away from the Kosi Ferry. Look at that center's rubbing it in the dirt down there. He's sweating all over it. Call it like a ball of snot. Yes, and that's, that's when it's a torrential downpour if it's that bad. But it's almost worse when you don't know what you're going to get when it's a night like this, a lot of moisture in the air, and you don't know what you're going to get. Thornton that's a pretty nice, that's a great job by Thornton there. Just coming right across, getting that left hand in front of the ball to bat it down. Starting to feel a little pivot, and it's interesting because coaches will tell you the first drive after the half, the crowd isn't as rowdy because there isn't as many people in the crowd because they perhaps went to get some concessions at halftime. Yes. So you, you're dealing with a less rowdy crowd as the visiting team on that first drive. UCF took advantage. They get the stop. They get a punt return here. Pass the 30 to the 31, Xavier Townsend. So we'll see if UCF can put together a couple of successful drives in a row from Boca Raton. Back here, I don't know his hurdles background. <laughs> hey, he might he might have to go out and try out for the track team in the spring, the way that looks. <laughs> no, he is good on the piano as well. That's another skill. He can do everything well. He hands it off to Bowser and right at the line of scrimmage. 
Jalen Wester made a big play earlier on in this game. The younger brother of the top receiver for FAU, LaJonte Wester. I'm telling you, Chris, John Rice Plumley is the perfect quarterback for Gus Malzahn and Chip Lindsey's system. The way he can run the football, and if he throws away the ball the way he does tonight, look out for every opponent on UCF's schedule. Extended play action, fake, sets his feet, and ruffles, it's intercepted! Dwight Toons with the pick for FAU, with run down the near sideline, he's running for the end zone, dives ahead! Down at the one! They're trying to run a deep pass here, a deep crossing route. He's trying to throw it over the defender who made the interception. Just a severe underthrow from John Rice Blumley. Well, I didn't have a problem with the read. It was just the throw itself. And then he does make the tackle. But that ball did look like it just didn't come out clean. I thought it slipped out of his hand. Which, of course, Dwight Toombs says, no problem. I'll take that. Really on the field as the runner was out of bounds at the one-yard line. It'll be first and goal from there. We have a sideline warning for FAU. First down. Well, understandably, that sideline was hyped. Because that's a potentially game-changing play. The first interception for Dwight Toombs. I thought John Rice Plumley in the pocket. Not here, but when he does. See it? It just didn't come out right. The ball angle looked a little bit off. He knew it right away. As soon as that ball came out of his hands, he was going to play. All of a sudden, he turned into a defender. He knew that was going to be a turnover. So he's talking to Brent Dierman upstairs. And some things that talking to uh, Chip Lindsay yes. upstairs. Some things will frustrate coaches. That to me was just a. That's not a. A dumb boneheaded move. It's just a bad throw for whatever reason. Mechanically, the ball slipped. It just did not come out right. He was going to the right guy. Just had to leave it a little bit higher. Wildcat McCammon. Oh, the snap goes past him. He regathers on the ricochet, but he's brought down at the five. Hodges the first there for UCF. Goal line struggles. Oh. How about some of these center exchanges? Sometimes down in the goal line, you saw Nick Weber there, the center. The, the, the offensive line want to get off the ball so fast. They want to get, you know, grind, grind, road grind their defensive tackle right over them. And while they do that, they just rifle that ball back to the back in the back of that shotgun formation. And then you mix in the wet ball. You go slip and slide. Second and goal. McCammon hammers his way through, but he stops the three. Raymond Morris Brash on the stop in a third down for FAU. Can this UCF defense bail out John Rice Plumley? Third and goal from the three. McCam in the running back. Justin Hodges, a nickelback. Right place, right time. It's fourth and goal. Great defensive play call from Travis Williams. And how about Hodges? That is perfectly played. That left hand across bats it away from the intended receiver. Fourth down, field goal unit comes on. Do you agree with this? Yes, I think this is the right thing to do to take the points here. Because if you don't get it, you got to. You gotta keep this within reach. You just got the turnover. You gotta take the points here. Well, Suarez will try to deposit those three. It's just a 19 yard blocked. Wow! UCF comes at large. Looks like Devon Wilson got his ball in there. Well, you said take the points. That's the look of a crowd that didn't get any points. You asked it, Chris, would they bail out John Rice Plumley? The UCF defense does that, bails out their quarterback. My goodness, guys argue about who had the sack, who had the tackle, well, all the time. That was rough, but Rice Plumley picks it up and unleashes and completes. John Rice Plumley had to handle another low snap. There was an under center fumble that was in the first half. 
we saw on the and goal situation for FAU on that last drive, a snap go over the head of the Wildcat McCannon. So this center quarterback is something to circle as we move forward for the second half. Second and ten. John Rice Plumley on the move. He has the first down. He kicks it into another gear up near midfield. John Rice Plumley, the senior at Hattiesburg, Mississippi, changes field position. A lot of quarterbacks, when they start running, they're quarterbacks that are running the football. John Rice Plumley turns into a running back or a receiver when he's running the football. He is a threat to score when he gets past the line of scrimmage. That's what makes him so dynamic as a runner. 36 yards. Bowser barrels and gains about two. And you've talked about it a few times about how John Rice Plumley, the perfect style of quarterback for Gus Malzahn. You sound like shades of Nick Marshall back in those offers? Yes, except he's bigger and he's got a better arm. Now he's got to develop to be a more consistent passer, but from what we've seen tonight, the interception, give him a pass on that one. That was a mistake he'd love to throw, he'd love to have back. Ryan O'Keefe on the sweep. He stays on his feet, continues to the 20. Dwight Toons, who made the interception, makes the tackle there, but UCF continues on the move, a pickup of 28. Well, there is speed out there all over the place. This time it's Ryan O'Keefe. I think that might have been a pass. That kind of pitched it forward to him, which is awesome for your completion percentage. <laughs> How's the stats? <laughs> Bowser. Nothing doing there. FAU's defense recovers. Second down for the Knights. And they're one and one on the year. FAU in this in state non conference matchup. They're two and one. And this was billed as one of the bigger home games that FAU has ever had. Hosting in state team that's had as much success as UCF. John Rice Plumley on second and seven. Plows ahead and is upended just shy of the goal line. He doesn't have a name on the back of his jersey like the rest of his teammates, but we know who he is. Yep. That time they faked the little shovel pass. Uh, John Rice Plumley takes himself. Quick tempo. It's a touchdown up the middle. R.J. Harvey, his first score of the season. And Chris, UCF, the halftime adjustments they made to establish the line of scrimmage showing up here. This is a walk-in touchdown for R.J. Harvey. But look at the ground game. They've started, they've started to really turn up some clock. They've started to establish the line of scrimmage. They've gotten the bay up there. And that's a, that's a punch right in your gut to the FAU defense. They have not been able to respond as of yet. Three drives in the second half. One touchdown, one interception, and then another touchdown. This one by R.J. Harvey. I think the important thing for FAU to note here is not press. They've got to keep running their offense. More than enough time for them to get their way back in this game. Platt lets it sail over his head. Let's take a look at our keys that we had at the beginning of the game, brought to you by Acura. So John Rice Plumley, the high percentage Plumley, wanted to see him around 65%. He's obviously had a monster night statistically. 16 to 26, he's around 62%. But you remember I told you three drops. Yeah. 19 to 26, he's up around 73%. So clearly doing that. Defense for UCF, two takeaways. They have one fumble recovery. How about the offense of FAU? Is that right? Has that not been updated? They have not been over 200 yards yet. They were at 192. At the right before the half, they've only had two yards rushing in this half, so goal line, to get this thing going. That goal line stand. Yep. And then you said two takeaways. You got the block field goal. That yes, feels like a takeaway. Absolutely, right? it feels like a takeaway. So there you go. You Without question. Two. First and ten from the 25. Harry, who's a dual threat, dives ahead. Gets to the 27, maybe the 28. But now FAU's offense has to get to work. It is just a two possession game down 16, two touchdowns, two two point conversions. This is an offense that 
their lowest total this season coming in, just 38. <laughs> so high when they're lost. Other than that, they've been in the 40s. Second and eight, extended handoff, and then a flag before the play. So take that away. False start. Offense, number 71. Five yard penalty. Second down. Chaz Neal. That's the big right tackle. There's a smidge off. This is where you can't lose your composure. Like some of these things you're starting to notice creep in some negative plays for FAU. Can't press. You got it. They look how flawless they looked in the first half. But UCF's done a great job making adjustments as well. And that first drive they had in this game was textbook. This is a second and 13. Check down here to Jaquan Burton, who doesn't get much after the catch. Martinez was the first there, and it's third down. Jason Johnson also gets credit for the tackle there. Jason Johnson, two time FCS All American in Eastern Illinois. He's been a standout for UCF in the first month of the year. Came in with 14 tackles. Third and 10 from the 25. Perry bottled up and taken down. Back at the 17. Kerman shoots, Lee Hunter, and the rest of the Knights. <laughs> there were a lot of Knights in the Cozy Perry's lap on this one. Number two, Lee Hunter. Just a monster bull rush. Just walks that right guard right back into Cozy Berry's lap. They're starting to celebrate, starting to feel it a little bit. And this UCF defense, they've only been allowing 15 points per game, 125 yards passing per game. They've been pretty stellar this season as well. We had Coach Willie Taggart's pregame speech. Embrace the adversity. Well, right now. FAU with a lot of adversity as UCF gets the football back near midfield, but there is a flag down as the Knights slated to get the football back. The flag is around the 40. I'm sure, it's one of those games where you don't have to say much in your pregame speech because these guys are ready During to go. During the return, holding, return team number 31, 10 yard penalty. First down. So back it up to closer to the 40. His mic's fixed. <laughs> That's clear. It's easier to hear than to read the lips. Well, this was an opportunity for Willie Taggart's team. Year number three has kind of been that special year in his previous stops at Western Kentucky and USF, leading those turnarounds. You can see the hold. Now this feels like for FAU's defense a must stop, right? I mean they, they got to force a three and out, force a punt. Can't can't afford to let UCF pile on here. Got to stay within striking distance. Richardson, who's a big play runner, is stood up by Dwight Zoos. Gain of four, maybe even four and a half. Second down, medium distance for UCF. Big 12 soon enough for 10 years in the American. Bowser, and he just runs forward. He wants contact. You're not going to be fooled by Bowser. You're going to get punishment. <laughs> no, there's no misdirection with him or trying to race to the sideline. It is coming right at you. Fifth-year player out of Sydney, Ohio, transfer from Northwestern. Multiple touchdowns in each of the first two games. He has one tonight. Third down, two to go. From the 47. Look, John Rice Plumley keeps. And he's close to the first down. Needed the 49. And they'll give it to him. Yeah, he fell forward. He's a pretty big boy, too. He's got he's got big legs. He can drive. He's a powerful runner. He's got a nice little. Mark on his neck too. That's a quarterback to take some hits tonight. 
I'm still wondering what happened to his last name on his jersey. <laughs> He's taken a lot of licks, man. He's probably like, got ripped off. <laughs> oh, here's oh. a reverse, and then a flip back. Lead flicker. John Rice Bluntley throws. Wide open. Alec Holler inside the 20. Head over heels near the 15. Trickery for yes. UCF to well, there was, the third. There was a lot going on here, but a lot of it was window dressing. Third quarter ends with a bang. 34-yard trick play. That's that uh, old Tiger Woods fist pump. Yeah. Oh, smells on there. Third quarter's done from FAU Stadium. UCF starting to take control. All right, welcome back to Boca where it's UCF leading FAU 30 to 14. Let's have a look at the big pass play. Now, there's a post route here. There's a lot of misdirection in the backfield, but watch where Holler, the tight end, is lined up, and then watch where he sneaks out of at the end of the route. Now here's the thing, there's a lot of misdirection in the backfield, there's a, a handoff, an end around, a flip back to the quarterback. FAU sees it, they're like, we're gonna get back on the post, but they lose track of Holler coming out of the backfield, and great job, great play design, and great read from John Rice Plumley, not forcing the big throw, but going to his secondary option and finding Holler for that big game. And it sets up this for UCF to start the fourth quarter with Ryan O'Keefe on a first down screen. Alec Holler originally came to UCF as a walk-on. Made the big play off the trick play. The total yards in the third quarter. How about that? 203 to Nada. Of course, FAU got stood up at the goal line and then had a field goal, 19 yards blocked. John Rice Plumley, <laughs> second and four, using the play action. I could hear that chuckle, Dan. I, mean, I just feel like you, I, you're jealous of the I, skills that this guy has. I am. Game. How did he not get sacked there? I, they, they had him dead to rights, and he just kind of sees it and just kind of gets his way out. Now, he did lose a half yard, but he didn't take the sack. <laughs> He is banged up. I don't know what happened to the name on the back of his jersey. I mean, that's a dirty jersey, too. It's not white anymore. It's, it's off white. Third down and five on the shovel. And Richardson is stood up. So that's the stop that FAU needed. Richardson. Now, but this is a fourth down. And if you're FAU, you just got to block this. <laughs> right, oh, right. Miss. Well, you can't let it get to three possessions. I mean, it's been a little bit of an adventure for everybody's kicking teams tonight. It hasn't been exactly 100% for either one. So I would not stop. A blocked field goal is not out of the realm of possibility here. Or a miss. Well, Colton Boomer. Taken over as the kicker. This one from 29 yards away. He missed an extra point earlier on. The freshman boomer, true to his name. Okay, boomer. 33-14 UCF. Man. They've been getting made public a little bit more. People paying attention to them. Yeah. They got to step up their smack talk. <laughs> oh, a little smack talk every now and then. You don't want it to get carried away, but it adds to the fun of the game. All right, so let's rewind back to the first quarter. John Rice Plumley, the quarterback for UCF, he had to change jerseys. Not sure the reason, but that's why the 10 that you've been seeing since has the uh, main. So he's got a go to the reserve. And now, because of that, he's our Geico difference. No, because of <laughs> the great plays, he's been the Geico difference. Maker. I mean, I'm one that, you know, you don't want to change things now. You just go with the nameless jersey from here on. I mean, he had a solid game. Now you got to roll with this one from here forward. Hey, it worked for Derek Jeter. That's right. <laughs> worked for a lot of Yankees <laughs> in those pinstripes. First down screen, Jaquan Burton. Knocked out of bounds after a pickup of seven. So, Nikosi Perry. He's been in the spotlight here for FAU. He's been quiet. The what? ground game has 
hasn't been the scene in the second half, and that's really been the difference for FAU. And now they're going to have to start moving it through the air. And with as much time, the time starting to wind down, they're going to have to start taking shots. Well, here is the shot. Deep down the near side through the hands of Burton. Time to go to the studio for Brent Stover for an update. Chris and Danny, USF trying to stun number 18 Florida. Michael Dukes off the option, gets to the pylon for the touchdown. The Bulls in the swamp lead Florida 28-24 in the fourth. Ooh, another juicy potential results. In college football, you can see the Florida FBS teams and what they've done so far this season. We have two of them here tonight. Third down and three. The receivers weren't engaged there. Blocking is Zuberi Mobley gets no gain and it's fourth down. Now, what's very interesting here, Chris, is that Florida State and Miami are the only undefeateds left. And the last time I checked, Miami's trailing to Texas A&M, which might mean there's only one more undefeated left in the state of Florida. Of course. That would be the team up in Tallahassee. After that win last night, man, I was proud of Florida State last night. They had Jordan Travis goes down. Jared Verse goes down. They had a lot of injuries and found a way. That was a gutty win for Mike Norvell and the Seminoles. They beat a Louisville team that was coming off of a win against UCF. Riley Thompson is in to punt as FAU got nothing going on that possession. Townsend slips one tackle, tries to slip the second and third, and is finally plopped down at the 31. Second half has been all UC 17 regular season 12 0. That undefeated regular season, second ever 12 win season. The American Conference champions with Scott Frost. And the resume speaks for itself. I'll get it back in a second after the first down carry. Xavier Townsend. 51 wins in the last 64 games for UCF. I feel for about a decade, maybe 15 years, that UCF was a sleeping giant, you know, just, just ready to take that next step. And man, have they ever. Now moving to the Big 12, playing here. They got great facilities, great fan base. Now they have a great coach in Gus Malzana. It was a perfect spot for him to take advantage of this opportunity. All right on that same level in terms of on that graphic that we just saw as Townsend scoots forward. As Appalachian State, who had another big win today, a late win against Troy. Third down and one upcoming for UCF. John Rice Plumley, 110 on the ground. I think you're going to see more of these types of games out of John Rice Plumley as the season goes on. He's such a weapon as a running quarterback. And they'll pick their spots, take those shots down the field. Third and one. He'll keep and taken down. But by the face mask, perhaps, is Joseph. His hands are in the cookie jar. Could be a first down for UCF. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 19. 15-yard penalty added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. So a first down for the Knights. Relatively low penalty game for UCF. That might be the first that you circle when you get back to the locker room. Three penalties for only 30 yards. Keep it going on the ground. Johnny Richardson is slung down. Courtney McBride on the tackle. UCF really slowing down the pace. They know this game is pretty much in control. Very methodical, taking their time. Letting the game clock run down, snapping it. You know, it's five or six seconds on the play clock. Yeah, they were down early in this game. They're down seven, nothing, down 14. To seven. Okay, with all the pressure on them this week coming off the loss, they've handled it well. John Rice Plumley inside the 40 yard line slides forward. I don't know if that was a true slide or he was sort of tripped down. But he's a few yards shy of the first. 
John Rice Plumley's taken a pounding. We saw his jersey. He's been through his second jersey. This the second one's dirty. Maybe the first one was so dirty you couldn't see anything, so they went to the second one. But he's he's put a lot. He's gonna be sore tomorrow. Third and three. Empty. But of course the quarterback is a running threat. Throw to screen. Townsend, who's a punt returner, is going to make it people miss. Does it right there. He's elusive, and he's just, just outside the 20-yard line. First down for UCF, Jaden Williams on the stop. Boy, is he ever tough to tackle. These little moves, the freshman from Tampa, Berkeley Prep. Really shifty. Good luck trying to get a solid hit on him. First down, John Rice Plumley. Now, you have a 19 point lead, 825 left. You mentioned that a game in control. Do you try to maybe cool it with the quarterback taking hits here? I, you know, I, I think you, I would personally, I would say, you know what? Let's just take it easy on him. He does mean so much to this team. We've seen what a part of this offense he was. And then I think clearly if you score this drive, you let him have the night off. And then you get your backup Mikey Keene in there, who played a lot for this team last year. Get the backups in there and get some reps. Yes, I would probably start running some of the backs more. <laughs> well, here is one of them who had a touchdown earlier, R.J. Harvey. Who did not play last year with an injury. You can see the uh, brace he's wearing on his left knee. Redshirt junior from Orlando, a transfer from Virginia. How about this for UCF? This is their first road game of the year in the state, of course. They don't leave Florida until October 22nd. Man. That's unbelievable. I saw that. I was like, wait a second, how can that be? <laughs> Home games and then this road game packed at the beginning, and then the season ends with a bunch on the road. Late play clock and one Lee Slee sees it, calls time. A look at UCF in their schedule. This is a great schedule. I think they're gonna be favored to win every single game. There's a few that jump out. You got the Georgia Tech, you got the SMU. And you have the Cincinnati. Should have just circled them. Still drawn them. The check marks. Those are the three games that I think are potential. The other ones, I think they win. Now, USF, strong performance right now against the Gators. Just like to point that out. Hate seeing Florida struggle. Oh, I'm sure you do. With, with the Bulls. I'm sure you do. Um, but there's a great chance that UCF could be a one loss team at the end of the year. And boy, if they are, you know what's going to bother Gus Malzahn in the Knights? That game against Louisville. I just know competitors. Oh, uh, beautiful pass. Jake. Javon Baker up top, touchdown UCF. Wow, high point of the ball. Alabama transfer and John Rice Plumley put it right there. Beautiful fade route. These two have been smock talk talking a lot of smack back and forth. That's pretty well defended, but there is no defense for a perfectly thrown ball. Smoke Mungin doing his best. Javon Baker won the best of that battle. That can be the exclamation point on this one. Javon Baker, touchdown number two of the season. He had exactly five catches for 84 yards in each of the first two games, like right on the money, five for 84. For point number 40, yes sir. 40 to 14, UCF on a strike from Plumley to Baker. That's a pretty catch. Great receivers, they know how to keep that body control and kind of use. <laughs> I think there's been some smack talk there. That was just a little last word from Javon Baker there. Baker started strong. He had three catches on the first drive. For FAU, down in this one, 40 to 14. Conference USA, you take a look at the realignment recap. Of course, a lot of shuffling, current members leaving, members from the Sun Belt, or to the Sun Belt, got members joining the American. It's, I'll tell you what, a lot of shuffling between yes. the Sun Belt, the American, <laughs> and Conference USA. If you can, like, draw some arrows on there. I'll keep it up. I'll tell you what, 
really strong programs right here. Liberty, Sam Houston, Jacksonville State, not to discount New Mexico State. They're a pretty strong program too. But Liberty's pulled off some wins against Power 5 teams. I mean, shoot, they owned the ACC a few years ago when Malik Willis was there. Jacksonville State beat Florida State last year. And Sam Houston was giving Texas A&M all they could handle for a half at the beginning of the season. So they've got some good programs coming in. But you mentioned it, Chris, good luck trying to track who's going where and what, who's playing in what conference. And I, I think there's still more movement to come. FAU approaching the American Conference for them. You have UCF leaving to join the Big 12. Not just teams that are changing. You have quarterbacks, some big names there that change teams. And, you know, I think it's interesting because it's a very mixed bag of results. 67 FBS quarterbacks changed schools in the offseason. You know, Caleb Williams is a great example of one that's working out really well for the Trojans. But it's hard to learn a new system and develop continuity and to be a leader in a locker room when you're only there for six months before you're starting. That's something I asked Gus Malzahn about yesterday was John Rice Plumley. How is he adapting to the team and getting in there? So he's a great leader, leads by example, comes in, studies up early, you know, gets extra work in late. That's the quickest way to rally a team around you and become a leader in a locker room. I mean, his transition. More difficult than most. Wester was double teamed. And not only you know changing schools, but also he's changing positions. Yeah, this one over the middle. It's a dangerous ball. Doug got out of the way. <laughs> yes. He almost got decapitated there. Now you're, it's a tough position for a quarterback to be in. You're trying to make plays. Trying to find, find some way to get a miracle comeback. Third and five. Perry keep the drive alive. Indeed, he does. First down on a strike to Tony Johnson. I don't call Tony Johnson's name much. He earned a scholarship in fall camp. He and Austin Evans right before the season began to pass catchers. For Nicosi Perry. Floats it deep down the far sideline. Off the hands of Jaquan Burton. So for Florida Atlantic, they have quite the tough schedule coming up with looking ahead. We got Rowan against Purdue, Rowan against North Texas. Off a of bye, then on the road against UTEP. Their only road game so far was a loss at Ohio. Second down. Harry. Great arching spiral, but again, it's incomplete as Edrick tries to win the battle with Thornton, does not. And it brings up third and long. like Perry a little bit banged up after that last one. Got a lot to be pleased about on the UCF side. The trail of the penalties. Your offense in the second half was smooth. The defense really turned it around after a hot FAU start. Third down. Perry is chased. Gets rid of it the last moment. An incomplete mechanic out of the backfield was the target and it's going down. I mean, this is just a straight bull rush effort through the line. Coming to get Nikosi Perry. He had nowhere to go with the football either. Took a pretty good shot there, Len. That was a lot of body weight coming down on that right shoulder. Willie Taggart might even be telling him maybe. Throw that away a little sooner, maybe. Save yourself the hit again. He was yep. a little shaken up after the play before. Of course, FAU's backup quarterback is Willie Taggart's son. Willie Taggart Jr. Punt is off. Good angled one to the near sideline and takes a right turn out of bounds. So Riley Thompson with a good punt. 
UCF, though, in complete control in a bounce back week. Network presented by Geico. A dominant second half for UCF. This game was 16 to 14 at halftime. UCF began the third quarter with a long touchdown drive. The really, to me, Danny, the game-changing moment was the FAU block field goal. Yep. And FAU had a 19-yard field goal. UCF blocked it and then scored a touchdown right after it. And hasn't really been close since. RJ Harvey keeps his feet moving. And he gets a big gain on the ground. That's up to New York. Brent Stover with an update. Chris, Danny, the Gators answer right back. Trevor Etienne up the middle. Florida back in front of USF. 31-28 with five to play in Gainesville, guys. So the uh, Florida madness. Got a couple of Florida schools yes. facing each other. <laughs> We've seen that here on this field tonight. Always fun to get these non-conference in-state matchups. That's one thing, too. I, you know, I played in the great rivalries, Florida State, Florida, Florida State, Miami. I, with all this conference movement, I really hope we protect some of the rivalries, the great rivalries of college football that we've seen and we've come to know and love. And we've lost some of them recently. The Texas A&M, Texas, one we haven't seen. It was great to see the backyard brawl back in action. We hadn't seen it over a decade. We need to protect those, man. That's what makes college football special. Like, how do we go over a decade without West Virginia right. playing each other. Right. That's, hey, we gotta keep that. John Rice Plumley continuing to be the signal caller for UCF. RJ Harvey though has been the man on the ground with this big lead. UCF in a competitive American conference. Houston and Cincinnati in the preseason poll, picked ahead of UCF. Of course, the Knights came into this year with hopes of doing what Cincinnati perhaps did last season, being a group of five team to make the college football playoff. Had a lot of returning talent. And then John Rice Plumley in the mix to run that Gus Malzahn offense. Third down and five connection. One lane to Townsend. From what you've seen here from UCF in this game, is this the kind of character bounce back performance off a loss that do you remember to see? there was one moment in this game that sticks out to me after they ran the flea flicker and he hit holler he went to his second read do you remember we flashed over to Gus Malzahn and he get, he just had that little fist pump he had a smile on his face this was a much needed win comfortable win for Gus Malzahn and UCF it's not like we were in the facility this week but you can almost just guess it was tense Yes. Coming off of the Louisville loss. And they knew they had that game. They had it in their hands, and they, they gave it away. Zero points in the second half. Less than 100 yards of offense in the second half. They had it right there. Two touchdowns called back with penalties. That one will sting for a while, but the best, best treatment after a loss like that is to get back on the field and have a performance like this. And now for FAU, this is a tough loss for them. Now they have to go respond next week in their next game. It's just the way the season is, it's a marathon. You gotta, you gotta keep battling no matter what happened. FAU next up as Townsend's shoulder to the ground. For FAU, they'll take on a Purdue team that suffered a close loss to Syracuse earlier on today in the whatever they call that. Dome. Yeah, right. I don't know what it is recently. <laughs> Garrett Schrader, man, that dude has been balling at quarterback for Syracuse. Had a beautiful touchdown pass to win that game to a Ronde Gatson. Yeah. His dad used to be a Miami Dolphin. Of course, they had to, to bring up the Orange and the, the great start they had. Remember, they beat Louisville, who beat UCF. Mm -hmm. Third down and nine. How about a deep shot? with a lead and some pushing some shoving and a flag UCF going deep to Jordan Johnson you 
Yeah, just taking shots down the field up 40 to 14. You mentioned this is a uh, game where the coaching staffs and the players are very familiar with each other. There are two fouls on the play, both by the defense. Pass interference, defense, number two. That penalty is declined. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 25. That 15 yard penalty be enforced. Automatic first down. And that one, Smoke Mungin was called for the PI. The penalty enforced was on Peters. Coming up next, our studio team dissects a full day of gridiron gameplay, have highlights from across the country. We'll miss inside college football coming up next here on CBS Sports Network. Timeout, UCL. That's their third. It'll be 30 seconds. Yeah, 40 to 14, timeout called by UCF. And they took a deep shot. <laughs> now a timeout here. <laughs> it's, no, it's not to rub it in. It, at some point, might feel a little bit like it when you're on the other side. Yeah, for a UCF team with Gus Malzahn, second year, he has his guy at the QB spot. And that can unlock a lot of what he wants to do. Despite not having the name anymore on the back of the jersey, he's made a name for himself on a Saturday night. Career high in passing yards, getting it done on the ground as well. 339 through the air, 121 on the ground, three combined touchdowns. Of course, the offense in the second half a week ago was not rolling. He got it back. He's still on the sideline. Thomas Castellanos. Carrying the run at quarterback, and he's on the run, literally, dancing his way to the 25-yard line. So Thomas Castellanos, the freshman from Georgia. He does have a previous Time out for an injury on the defense. There's an injury on the Florida Atlantic. UCF putting on the finishing touches. Good to see Harvey back in the mix. R.J. Harvey to the 10 yard line. And that perhaps will be the last play run by UCF. It as should be. Going to the big three formation at this should point. be. Oh, hey, this is a pedal to the metal. We don't stop for anybody. They're not trying for that victory formation. They're pushing. Okay, the second team some run. Early movement. I don't let the play run. Why not? <laughs> Castellanos to the sideline. thought about There's staying in bounds. Or check the penalty. See if that play will even count. Only nine combined penalties in this game. Looks like Kevin Randall is ready to give the offsides. Wants to confirm with the side. Offside. Line. Defense. Number 97. In the neutral zone at the snap. Five yard penalty. First down. It is a call there. If you have to do, you know, you have the, the team punishments you mentioned for penalties, they have one this late. <laughs> There's a rough one to add to the mix of what you have to do during the week. And that was a story for UCF coming in with 21 penalties combined through the first two games. Looks like that will be the final play. They only commit three penalties in this game. Much cleaner for UCF. Coming off a tough loss to Louisville. It is a bounce back that Gus Malzahn and company needed. 40 to 14. A huge second half and a road win in the state of Florida against FAU.